Yeah, and many people were wondering why you still prefer <laughs> RX Java over Flow. I have no experience with RX Java. I only used live data and Kotlin Flow, but Flow and RX seem to be very similar. So, what? Why do you still prefer to use RX? The short answer to that is that RX has less quirky behaviors. Hmm. Like with flows, uh, it it kind of shows that it's new. <laughs> Uh, in a sense that uh, the way, um, well, it's not really refined. The API is not really refined, I feel. Like if you look at just debounce, which is a very common operator, it's experimental. You look at, you look at the internals and you don't really get ahead with it. <laughs> there are all these tricky things. And uh, yeah, debounce, mean, debounce means that you get the value after a certain amount of time. For example, yes. when you want to search for something, but you don't want the search to trigger immediately. You want to trigger it automatically, but after like half a second, after not typing something, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that way you don't like, especially if you would be sending API requests for like each yeah. step, you don't want to do that. You want to like wait so that, okay, now the user stopped typing. Now yeah. we should just send it up. And this is a really common thing. And when I saw that flow debounces experiment, I'm like, are you sure about this? Like, mm. is this stable? But uh, the real issue with flows was that, uh, what was the specific quirky behavior that made us not want to do it? It it was really tricky to execute something in a super scope, coroutine scope in a way, right? Like I have this view model with the view model scope, I want to run something that should run in a singleton elsewhere and then know about it later. And the only way to do that would be to like run the whole thing in that super scope. So structured concurrency is theoretically a blessing because it prevents you from doing this. But then when you need something like this, you're like, okay, what do I do now? And what you do in the end is replace it with Rx, or at least that's what I did. But... Um, I don't remember the exact details of this particular thing. I'm not sure what I was trying to hack around with, but uh, with Rx, you have better control over when you want to create something and destroy something. It's not like you have this job somewhere and you have this coroutine scope somewhere, and then you can cancel the job, you can cancel the scope, you can cancel the children of a job, you can do all these things. Um, there's just so much more extra complexity that you need to care about when you're using coroutine flows because of how it's built on top of coroutines, which were already a complex framework. Like they are nice, but you also need to care about catching the Kotlin cancellation exception, which is something you don't need to care about with Rx. Uh, you, did I say having to catch it? You need, you need to re-throw it. That's the opposite of what right. I meant. Yeah. Yeah, you need to retrow it. If you catch it, then Kotlin cancellation exception will break. But on the other hand, you see Google code where they explicitly catch Kotlin cancellation exception. And I'm like, I'm not sure what's going on here. So if anymore. you don't retrow it, then the coroutine doesn't cancel at all. It won't be able to tell the scope above it that this scope should be canceled. So mm. that coroutine will uh, run to the end. And whoever tried to initiate a cancellation won't be able to do that. Yeah, that's really a thing that seems easy to miss. It's super easy to miss because you just say try catch it, throwable anywhere in the code, any code yeah. that catches it and doesn't explicitly check for Kotlin cancellation exception to retrow it, which is pretty much all code that doesn't work with coroutines per se. Like it just one library that you pull in has this thing that try catch throwable and just log, for example, because I don't know, it's a bad library for whatever reason and they wouldn't retrow it or, mm. or it wraps it in a runtime exception. And then you need to check if the cause is a Kotlin cancellation exception, for example, you can't really know this. So as such, I don't really trust the cancellation in coroutines. <laughs> and as such, I prefer Rx because I don't need to think about it. It just works, especially if you use behavior relay. Yeah. The nice thing about Kotlin flow is that it has structured concurrency where we, uh, launch a curtain scope and then we cancel we make sure that we cancel it at a certain point if we don't need it anymore and this takes care that all the work that we launch inside the scope is then also automatically cancelled right and that we don't keep anything running um 
too long or indefinitely and get a memory leak this way. So for example, we have this view model scope, which is automatically, uh, which you can use inside a Jetpack view model and it's automatically canceled when the view model is cleared and any work we start inside this view model scope, the any uh, suspend function is automatically canceled when uh, this view model scope is canceled. So we don't keep anything running longer than we were aiming for. This is kind of true. Uh, for one, yeah, it's the suspending functions. For two, if you have a suspending function with a while through in it, it would still... Yeah, it's cooperative. It would, yeah, it needs to be cooperative, which means that it needs to be like ensure active in the right functions so that uh, it can throw a ca mm. Kotlin cancellation exception when it... Or call one of the library suspending functions because they do this all internally. But yes, they also have Ensure Active, but like, yeah, if, if if you don't know if you're calling any of the library hmm. functions, then you need to call Ensure Active. Or you can call throws, Yield, but, as far as I know. Yeah, I don't think Yield would get out of a loop. That's what I they, what they read in the documentation, I think, that you can it call does? Yield. I think so. I guess Yield internally also would have Ensure Active hmm. in it, because that would make sense. But yeah, it gets out of the loop with an exception. That's the Kotlin cancellation exception. But does Rx Java have structured concurrency or how do you handle it there to make sure that you cancel work when you no longer need it? Well, if you have something like a while through, then that's something you still need to care about, of course, unless you are using like observable from iterable and then everything is an Rx operator and not a loop. But I think that's uh, typically overkill in most cases, unless you want to execute like an asynchronous operation for each element. So the way you would handle it is either to have everything as an operator because between operators, it also checks if cancellation happened and then just not execute anything after. Or another thing you can do with is to just keep it so simple that you don't need to actually rely on this. Like um, most of the Rx code that I need it for, is for like uh, the view model properties for me are in the scope service are behavior related. It's basically just like mutable live data, but it's Rx based for, for its operators so that you can like debounce them, combine them, filter them, blah, 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 as you know. Uh, and then I just observe those on the fragments, the fragment side of things and just add the subscription to the composite disposable and clear the composite disposable when it's no longer needed. So those complex chains that people tend to talk about how Rx makes things, everything unreadable because you use maybe and then completable and then uh, what else was there that people use and I don't. Uh, like, I just don't write that sort of Rx code. Like, I try to solve those in different means. <laughs> so as such, what structured concurrency offers you, I just don't rely on that. Mm, interesting. <laughs>